It's episode 100 of the Games and Grabs podcast. This week, we discuss the Nintendo Direct, recent game announcements, AEW All Out, and NXT TakeOver UK Cardiff. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 100 of the Games and Grabs podcast. Woo. I'm Sonny, and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello! Finn, we finally <laughs> made it to episode 100. It's about time. <laughs> we got it, finally. Yeah, the, the world tried to keep us down, but uh, it did. we're finally here, uh. and um, it's been—I think it's been—it's been a fun 100 episodes. Obviously, we've done oh, yes. stuff in between that, but um, ultimately, to get to 100 episodes, I think is is quite an achievement. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, we've been all over the place. We've been when we started the new different podcast, the Grabcast, and then we came back to Game of Grabs. Um, I died and got better. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's all good. It's uh, yeah, it's crazy. 100 episodes. Yeah, and many more to come for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I feel it, like we're finally starting hundred. to sort of level out now. Yeah. I feel like we're finally sort of starting to get back to some sort of normality, which will allow us to do the uh, Games of Grass podcast on a weekly basis. Yes. And we should be all good going forward. So absolutely. Uh, for regular listeners, we're sorry that we've been sort of sporadic with the recording and the releasing of the podcasts, but um, we're still here and we're still 100% committed to the cause and uh, we'll be doing this on a weekly basis going forward for sure. Absolutely. So um, we'll start the podcast as we always do. We've got a lot to talk about this week. Oh, yes. Because we've been away for so long. <laughs> but Finn, what have you been uh, What have you been playing? <clears throat> Ooh, what have I been playing? Um Right, so I recently just uh, finished Sekiro, got the Platinum Trophy for that. I mean, that is super impressive. Like, <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine it was hard. I saw the videos you were posting on Twitter and stuff, and it was like, I don't. why is he playing this game? <laughs> like, I, I play Dark Souls, and I'm awful at it, as you know, everybody knows. But um, you said that Sekiro was harder than Dark Souls. It is, yeah, it's the hardest Soulsborne yet, in my opinion. Um, maybe it's a meme because once you get to a boss, if you if you're struggling with the boss, you can't go away and like grind it out and level up. Um, because you can't, there's no leveling up basically. You level up by beating bosses. Um, so you just got to learn the pattern and learn how to. You got to get good basically, and learn how to beat them. Uh, and yeah, it's like it's pop. It's like when you start fighting a boss, it's like when you first get to it, it's like this is impossible. There's no way to beat this boss. I'm gonna give up and just never play it again. But it keeps trying, it keeps trying, keep learning their attacks. Then you have to deflect them, learning how to block them and stuff. It's like okay, yeah, I can do it, I can do it. And eventually you find it, you find a way to beat them, and it's like, yes, I did it. It's so rewarding, it feels so good when you do finally beat them. <laughs> yeah, that's something I, I liked about um, Dark Souls and Bloodborne as well, like, just how rewarding it is, because you do have to, you know, I mean, obviously with Bloodborne and Dark Souls, you, you can go away and level up, and then you come back and just, just you know, beat the crap out of the boss. Yes, but, yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, that definitely sounds like a more rewarding way to do it, the way that Sekiro does it, for sure. Yeah, because like you need to be, you need to have your like timing down. Like you deflect the attacks, but you got to press like block at the just just the right time, just right before they hit you to deflect their attacks. And yeah, it's so good. Where would you rank it um, on the Soulsborne hmm. league table? That's a question. Um, I still think Bloodborne would be number one for me. Uh, Bloodborne's just like so good. It's perfect. Um, it's outstanding. I, yeah. <clears throat> Um, I'd say just below Bloodborne, I think. Really? Number two? Yeah. I'd say, yeah, Bloodborne... Yeah, I'm probably in descending order, actually. Probably Bloodborne, Sekiro, then Dark Souls, 3, 2, 1. Actually, 3, 1, 2, 2's not that great. But, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm happy that you enjoyed it, and I can't believe you platinum did it. That, in itself, deserves the platinum round of applause. Let's do this. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it requires a second playthrough as well because you have to get you have to get all the endings, and you can get most of them by like just like saving your game and like backing up your save and like redownloading and stuff. But just play through it a second time, just for like extra bosses you can do for all the endings. But uh, yeah, how many yeah. hours do you think you put into it? <clears throat> oh man, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> a lot. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll put it around the 40, 50 mark, if not more. Jeez, that's not too bad to be honest. I mean, yeah, it could be worse. You know, there are games that you know, Red Dead. Yeah, like no, it was a 60, 70 hour one playthrough. So yeah. I guess that's not too bad. Yeah, it's all right. It's yeah, it's a good game. Really, really good. I'm actually surprised at how high the percentage was for the Platinum. It's like eight or nine percent. I was like, oh, wow, really? I can only assume it's because um, it didn't sell super well. And because the people buying it are people like me who love a challenge and, you know, like these stupidly hard games, mm. like, like pain and suffering. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, there's definitely a market for it. Otherwise, they wouldn't keep making them. But oh, of course. I- 
it didn't sell well. I'm, I'm actually quite surprised to hear that, considering. Yeah, I, I don't think so anyway. I could be wrong about that, but uh, yeah, compared to like Dark Souls games, I don't think it sold super well. But Fair enough. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be surprised if it, 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 it did hit sales think. fairly quickly. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But, like, I, I, I do hope we get a sequel for it. I think you will. Cool. Um, well, speaking of Blanche Rangers, I also platinumed uh, Bloodstained, the uh, Metroidvania-inspired game. Oh, the, uh, the 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 buggy Castlevania game. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, right. inspired by Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Um, but yeah, anyway, hell of a game. It's really really good. B- buggy as hell. So many bugs and things, but really really fun. Uh, really well made, well made, well designed. And so, yeah, if you, if you like Metroidvania, you, you should definitely play it. Well made and buggy, all in the same <laughs> sentence. Yeah, well, well, well designed. Like the maps, like really well designed, and like how how everything works is uh, really well made. But uh, mm. also just like yeah, just buggy as hell. <laughs> that's, a, that's another platinum trophy for the uh, for the platinum round of applause. Yeah. Round of applause. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, the one I backed on uh, Kickstarter back when way, way, way back when they first announced it. Mm. Yeah, so good. Um, I, at least you enjoyed it. That's the main thing. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, you said that it was buggy as hell, and you've not tried to sugarcoat that fact. <laughs> uh, but the main thing is, you still enjoyed it, and you persevered and got the platinum. So that's awesome. Yeah, I loved it. It's, it's still a, a, a great, great game. Don't let, the bug, don't let the bugs put you off. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I've never, I'm not really into the Metroidvania type thing. I mean, I, I appreciate Ooh. them for sure. <laughs> but um, I think they're just, they're just not my kind of thing. I think because I've not um, sort of grown up playing in Castlevania or anything like that, I That's think it's a little bit lost on me now. But um, I mean, they're, they're, they are good games. I mean, you yeah. know, the ones that I have attempted, like Dead Cells, I guess, would be classed as one. Sure. I'll play that one for sure. <laughs> That's good. It's on Xbox Game Pass now as well, actually. Oh, yeah. So you should definitely try that because you'd really like it. Cool. Um, yeah, you should, you should definitely go and play uh, Castlevania Simulator tonight, which you can get from my profile. Uh, it's on the Castlevania collection. I can't remember what it's called. Castlevania Requiem, something like that. Oh, yeah. The um, a quote unquote re release, remaster. Pretty much, yeah. But yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's probably the best Metroidvania ever, in a lot of people's opinions, with that included. It's, yeah, it's so good. Play that one. Cool. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I started, been start, I started playing uh, Control recently. It's just fun to do from Remedy. Mm, what do you think to it? It's really good. Um, yeah, really, really good. Um, another one that's kind of a little bit buggy. I got a table stuck to me in the first like ten minutes. Yeah, it was a bit on Twitter. Um, yeah, it was pretty funny. I was, I was like, I saw like all physics, op- like physics objects. I was just plowing through them just because lol. Uh, <laughs> and then like I got tables like stuck around me. It's like, ah, get it off, get it off. That's what I yeah, saying. I saw the video on Twitter. I was like, "Oh god, this, this is not a good first impression." <laughs> That's why I'm not on mind things like that. It's just funny, um, but yeah, I've I've got very far. He's just got the uh, like um, telekinesis power, but it's just fun. Oh, the one where you can pick up and throw. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I was like throwing like tables at people. It's like <laughs> they're shooting yeah. at me. He's like, "Shut up, take the table in the face." <laughs> <laughs> I've um, I've been playing it too. Uh, I'm I think I'm about three quarters of the way through it. Nice. But I really, really like it. I think oh. it's I think it's very good. Um it's super buggy and it definitely needs patching for sure. Oh, yeah. Um <laughs> like when you unpause the game and it just like stutters, I don't understand how that is even a thing. It has a stroke when he's trying to <laughs> unpause. I oh, know, it's so weird. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I, so I don't understand what's going on there. Another thing that puzzles me about it, and it, this is a very nitpicky thing, so um, there's no HDR, and and it doesn't mm-hmm. really look like a 4K game either. Yeah, it looks a little dated, graphics-wise. It does look dated. I mean, I've seen people on Twitter going, oh, look at the graphics, and it's like, <laughs> n- yeah. what? This is It just yeah. looks like looks- an okay game. Yeah, it, it looks it's saving fine. Grace. Uh, yeah, it looks yeah. fine. It's, it's not crap by any stretch but it's not it's not rise of the tomb raider it's yeah, not, not not red there too you know, anything. no that's <laughs> it yeah it, it's not anywhere near that but it, the gameplay is it's saving grace i mean uh, the combat is fantastic i think uh, i love the uh, i love the fact there's only one gun and that you mm. can upgrade it yeah i do like that actually that's cool uh, i think that's really cool so instead of you know having a weapon wheel or anything like that you literally press x to you know skip through the different variations of the one weapon that you have, and it's it's very cool. Uh, I like the powers as well. They get more as you go through the game, of course. Um, but I, I like it. It, it. You know, it's set in one setting, but it doesn't feel like it's set in one setting, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, 
Like, it's like, what map, isn't it? Like, I was, I was expecting it to be, like, just a standard running gun, like, walk forwards and shoot the bad guys kind of thing. But no, it's, like, yeah. proper, like, you've got open world-ish kind of thing going on. Got side quests and things like that going on. It's cool. Yeah, so you've got, you've pretty much got free reign. I mean, there's loads of collectibles. There is side missions. There's quite a lot of them as well, actually. Yeah. And you can pick side missions up from actual missions as well. So you can sort of, um, you know, you can, you can sort of go in a different direction, even if you're midway through a mission and stuff like that. So it's not your simple linear, like single player experience. It's, it's really good. I mean, to, in that sense, it reminds me of uh, Resident Evil, the first one. Oh yeah. Good. Uh, um, obviously good Resident Evil didn't have side quests or anything like that, but you could wander around freely, um, you know, and, do the missions as they, I say missions, do the objectives as they come across to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I thought of was like, sort of like uh, Bioshock as well. Yeah. Uh, so just like urban world-ish kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good comparison as well, I think. But yeah. it's a really good game and I think people are sleeping on it because this time of year, it's very convoluted for games. There are so <laughs> many like big name releases coming out uh, yeah, yeah. around this time of year. So the people are spending their money, you know, cautiously. They don't want to just run out and buy every new release that comes out. Um, you know, if this came out in February, I think it'd be perfect. It'd be exactly <laughs> what people need for the, that time of year. Yeah, definitely. But the fact that they brought it out, you know, back end of August, early September, it's, it, it's going to affect it. And that's a real shame. Maybe people will pick it up more when it hits sales, at uh, the back end of the year, like yeah. on digital sales and stuff like that. But Hopefully. it's a great game, not to be slept on, uh, so definitely do check it out. Absolutely. Yeah, I said to you, like, um, I, I forgot it even existed. I forgot there was, like, a Remedy game that was coming out. I just saw, saw the end control and thought, yeah, the bird of it's probably going to be shit. <laughs> and then the, <laughs> and then we saw the reviews come in. I was like, oh, wait, no, this actually looks really good. Oh, it's Remedy's game. Like, oh, of course, yeah, I forgot that was coming out. <laughs> and, yes, yeah, yeah, I'm still glad, glad I looked at those because, yeah, it's enjoy I'm enjoying it. It's really good. Yeah, it is really good. It is making me want to go and actually finish Quantum Break once I've done it. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Because uh, it is it good, right? but I think Control's better. Oh, yeah. The, the thing that lets Quantum Break down for me is the is the, is the cutscenes. Mm. Like, yeah, it's I think they're good, but I don't want to watch a whole series while I'm playing a game. It takes it away. <laughs> yeah, just a bit, yeah. No, I know what you mean. I, I mean. Quantum Break was fine. I played like a solid like 7 out of 10, nothing, you know. It's all right. Yeah, it's not it's not spectacular, but it's not crap. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's it's just yeah, I don't want to watch a whole Netflix series <laughs> when I come out of you know the game. I want to you want to be immersed in the game world, and that I mean I understand where they were trying to go with it, like as far as right, we'll put this series in, and we've got all these these big name actors, and we'll make it a whole thing. But I think what they struggle to understand is that gamers. Uh, a lot of the time, they don't really want that. They want, um, they, they just want a solid playthrough. Cutscenes are great, mm. obviously, because story is key, but of course. they don't want that sort of uh, FMV type nonsense for like 20 minutes or so in between chapters. Yeah, I mean, Control does have its like sort of like live action stuff, but it's like done in little bits. It's not like a huge, massive TV show yeah. you're trying to watch while you're playing the game. Yeah, that's it, yeah. No cool. need for that at all. But yeah, anyway, absolutely. yeah. What else have you been playing, or is that it? Um, I played briefly some uh, Borderlands VR, which is awesome. I'm gonna make that probably make my make that my, my my next uh, big playthrough, I think, because uh, it's been a while since I played some VR, and Borderlands is excellent. And the Borderlands Three coming soon. Oh, it's uh, Borderlands Two, isn't it, on the PSVR? Ah, uh, yeah, Borderlands Two, yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. Uh, just added the uh, DLC as well for free, completely for free. Oh, of course. Which is uh, pretty awesome. Um, just shows that they like care about. Borderlands TVR because I was kind of scared that I'm going to put it out and stuff, forget about it because nobody bought it or something. But it shows that people it's actually awesome. did buy it, and yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it bridges that gap as well between Borderlands Three as between two and three, of course, because three comes out next week or the week after. Yeah, it's soon, soon. Yeah, very soon. Uh, I've played Borderlands Two VR, and I love seeing um, the wasteland in VR. Oh yeah. Um, the thing that let it down for me, only again, this is so nitpicky, <laughs> is the cutscenes uh, aren't in VR. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't play very much. Just I played it briefly. I thought, oh, yeah, it's awesome. I'm good. Uh, yeah, they're, they're very much sort of, you just watch the cutscene. <laughs> All right. That's weird. I think most of it's just like open world stuff anyway, isn't it? I think it's a huge oh, yeah, amount of cutscenes. Oh, yeah. For the, for the most part, it is. But like um, like key story stuff um, is all in sort of as it would be in the actual game. Hmm, weird. Oh, I think oh. that'll break me off too much. 
No, no, no. It's not. It's not. It's not a massive thing. Again, that's me being so incredibly picky. But <laughs> it, it didn't take away from the experience for me, and it actually runs very smoothly as well. It's not a motion sickness. Uh, you're gonna fucking die when you take the headset off type thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. So it's um, it, it it is cool. Yeah. So I, th- I think you'll enjoy a full playthrough with that. I mean, what is it about forty hours? Yeah, it's, it's a long one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a huge game. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it. Um. <laughs> Yeah, and the other thing we're playing is the you know a Persona dancing game, Persona Four dancing game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Persona Three and Five we released a little while ago, and we got the Four like came with that as a package. It was on Vita originally. Uh, yeah. play, playing that again because I I planned it originally on Vita. I'm trying to try and do it again because it's like a just like a fun dancing game. I thought it'd be a nice nice uh, change of pace from Sekiro. It's a nice happy dancing game, and I'm so start the story. And the very first thing that happens in the story is like someone hangs himself. I was like, oh. Ah. Ah, oh, right, I forgot. Persona can be really dark sometimes. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like a happy dancing game. It's all about, like, suicide and things like that. It's like, oh, right, okay. Whoops. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that, that does sound a little bit, uh, a yeah. little bit dark, it must be said. Uh, but it's, 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 that's the great thing about uh, these Persona games. It's like, it's like this contrast of, like, really dark things, but at the same time, like, really happy and cheerful and things. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's cool. It's it's like hard it's hard to explain. It's like it's good, but it's, when you try to explain it to people, it sounds like the weirdest thing. But yeah, I mean, it definitely <laughs> sounds weird. I mean, I have played it and I um, I like it. The gameplay is, is different, but I just I, you know I really like Persona Five. Mm, really good. Um, I've played a little bit of the dancing game and I, I just couldn't get into it. But it's that's not fair. because it's bad. <laughs> it's just it's it's very weird. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 right. You need, you need you need the right sort of mindset to go into it. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I just passed uh, seven weeks since you <laughs> recorded last time. Um, yeah, so how about yourself? What have you been playing? Um, I've been very casual, if I'm being honest. I mean, I, I hit such a huge slump with uh, with gaming, but I'm starting to uh, pick myself a little bit like up a little bit now. Cool. Um, so I've been playing Control, like I previously mentioned. I think it's really great, and I'm looking for. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish that because I'm I'm close to the end now. Anyway, so. Um, I'm going to push on with that and finish it. Cool. Um, I've also been playing, um, I've played a, well, I say playing, I've played a very small part of it, is uh, Man of Medan, Ooh. which is the um, the the game from Supermassive. Oh, uh, yeah, the um, uh, Until Dawn spin-off kind of thing. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to be very critical about it now. <laughs> right? I, I know I said that I've only played a small amount of it, but the small amount of it I've played... I mean, you, you, it's that old saying of you only get one chance to make a first impression. Ah, uh, yeah. Right. And for me, I don't know what it is. The, the characters aren't likable. They, they've actually got the guy from Quantum Break in the game as well. Oh, really? He plays a, he plays a character in there. Huh. Um, there's, um, <coughs> like the very first bit, it's like it's set in the war. All right. Like a, as like a build up to the main story. Right. Uh, I've not really discovered as to what that actually is yet. Yeah. Uh, and it's got um like there's a couple of the cast members from I don't know if you've played it or not, but it's another one from Supermassive and it was um one of the Playlink games. It's called Hidden Agenda. Oh all right. I've heard of it. I haven't actually played it myself. It's really good. Um me and Kay played through it and we, we thoroughly enjoyed what we we played through it a few times actually, but it's that was that was that was really good fun. Cool. And a couple of the cast members from that are in the very early bit of the game. But the character models are okay, but yeah. they just look weird. Like the, the uh, way their mouths move and stuff like that, it just they just look like rubber people. It's so strange. Yeah, but the uh, uncanny valley going on a little bit, yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it's bizarre. They don't look like their faces look okay, but they don't look like human beings. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. They look, they look like Stretch Armstrong has been stretched a, a little too much. <laughs> and like he's had a stroke a little bit as well. <laughs> oh dear. So it's it, it's <laughs> bizarre because the graphic the, the graphics are good. Yeah. But just, in, in a shit way. Yeah, the character models aren't great, yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It, it's, not, it's nowhere near the standard of Until Dawn. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's like a little like spin-off game, so it didn't try super hard. <laughs> on the the graphics. Amazing- they're making an anthology of this, uh, and yeah. they've been. This game has been in development now for for ages. Oof! Yeah, it hasn't reviewed super well as well. I've seen like those people complain about it. It's, yeah, so yeah. I mean, I've been. I played a little bit of the story. The characters aren't likable, and the graphics are just okay. 
Yeah. And it just meanders along to a, a very slow pace. And um, I know you've got a build story, but there's a there's a thin line between building a story and it being boring as shit. <laughs> and, uh, the, at the minute, it's boring as shit. And I, I I put it on the other night and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I like Until Dawn. Uh, I like these kind of games. I'm going to play and see what it's like. And I was wandering around, like you're on a little boat to start I mean- off with. And I was wandering around the little boat and picked up binoculars and all this sort of stuff. And I was like, this is fucking boring. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go back to it because it's only supposed to be short and I will finish it and I'll be able to give you a a, a full review of it. But uh, at the minute, it's not good. And if they, this is the way they're starting the Dark Pictures anthology, um, I don't hold out much hope for the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, bad start. I mentioned like unlikable characters. It's like, that's like a pretty big problem because then you're supposed to be like controlling their face. Like if you don't care about them, you just want them all, just you don't have to kill them all. Screw it. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. That, that, that's, and that's why it's so weird to me that they've made all these characters douchebags pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even the ones that you're supposed to like, you're like, I don't give a fuck about this person. Why <laughs> do, what? I, I just give, give me a reason to care. Yeah. Uh. Like in Until Dawn, you had the emotional thing instantly because they'd all been affected by this this tragic event that had happened and these two girls that had died and now they're all coming together for a reunion and you know instantly you know you care you you, you care about the situation but yeah. with this basically it's um a group of like friends or like a, a two brothers and a girl who have hired a boat so they can go diving for this uh shipwreck basically right and, um, you know, yeah, just, the, the, just a bunch the, of douchebags the, being douchebags. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> the, the, the fourth character is just the woman who hires the boat out. Yeah. And like yeah. instantly, like you got one of the characters being douchebaggy, like trying to be romantic with the, uh, with the woman. Yeah. And it, it's all very, uh, confusing and they've not done it very well at all. I don't think. Um, yeah. It's it's so weird. I mean, like I said, I will I will play through it and I'll finish it. But at the minute, I it, I don't think it's it's nowhere near the level of Until Dawn. I mean, Until Dawn was great. Oh yeah, I loved Until Dawn. Uh, but this um, not not great so far. So it's a very poor start for a very um, highly anticipated game. Yeah, shame. I expected much better. Must be said. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, um, but otherwise I've been. Um, I played Wreckfest. Oh yeah, that's so good. I was so playing. good. <laughs> it's so good, dude. Um, it's it's like the first race you do in the career mode is like a destruction derby on lawnmowers. Yeah, <laughs> nice. So it, it, you know what? It's a breath of fresh air because it's not. It doesn't take itself seriously like at all. Yeah, uh, obviously, but um, it works so well. It's like destruction derby, but now. I hope that's good. Good description. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and that, that's all you need to know about it. You've got the you've got the great destruction derby, like demolition derby races, and then you've got uh, the you know the bowl, like where you you know you all drive trying to wreck each other. This is nice. Uh, it, it's just really great. Uh, there's like sofa races and stuff like that, and it, it's well worth checking out. Um, I think that is one of the sleeper hits of the year. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. As we that we did one for them on the stream actually. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's such awesome. a cool game, and it's it's only a budget title as well. I say budget title; it's thirty five quid, but yeah, that's good. It's, yeah, it's not so bad. It, it it is good, and it's well. You'll love it straight away because oh, yeah. the thing is, it just takes you. There's no there's no seriousness about it. <laughs> it's literally just driving, and your aim is to kick the shit out of the other cars. Yeah, that's cool. I remember playing. I remember playing like an early, early, early like alpha back in the day on PC, like with this like really early in development it's like yeah it's alright but it's like so early in development like nothing had been finished um, but yeah I imagine it's been it looks so good from the trades and things and all the gameplay I've seen yeah. like, oh, I need to it again so another good. thing what's cool about it is it's super no frills as well <laughs> yeah yeah just kill uh, beat up the enemies fan- good. it's not Forza <laughs> it's not Gran Turismo <laughs> it's not fancy or anything like that good <laughs> it's just uh, here's cool. a car go mess it up cool. not too much driving no not at all <laughs> that's right him well, well, some of the races <laughs> like, don't last long at all. That's, just, that's, about, that's about three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah, I, I highly recommend Wreckfest. I think it's very good. Awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely buy that at some point. For sure. Um, 
I've stepped out of my comfort zone a little bit with <clears throat> sports games. Boo. And um, <laughs> I got sent a code for Madden 20. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm not an American football fan. Um, I understand it from playing previous games, but um, I think this one's really good. It's very pick up and play. Cool. I'll take because a Because there's different, <laughs> there's different settings for different kinds of players. So basically, I've picked the arcade setting. Makes sense. The and fun setting. It plays... And yeah, yeah, basically <laughs> the fun setting. Yeah. So you still get the full, you know, you know, NFL experience, but it's more fun to play. It's more fast paced. It's, it's 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 just it's very good. Um, I think EA have done a really good job with it. Um, from what I read, uh, and people who play it year on year, it hasn't changed much from the last couple of years. But I think you know, if you play a sports game consistently, you are going to find that anyway. I find, I definitely find that with FIFA now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, for from an outsider, I think it's very good. And so if you're a sports fan and you're interested in, um, you know, coming away from FIFA or whatever you play, then Madden is definitely worth looking at if you just fancy a few casual games of American football. Cool. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, I've been picking my Switch up every now and then, dipping in and out of Zelda. Um, nice. I'm just, I've, I've just been trying to find my, my gaming groove again, and I'm finally starting to get back into it. Awesome. Um, I've got a couple of other games uh, to play. Uh, they're, again, they're sports games because this the time of year. Sports. So I've got NBA 2K20 and uh, PES 2020 uh, that I actually can't talk about yet. Ooh. That I'll talk about next week. NDAs. Ooh. Yeah, uh, NBA's fine. <laughs> I can talk about that. It's out. I just haven't played it. Cool. But, um, PES <laughs> isn't out for next week, so I can't talk about that yet. But Perfect. I will do next week. Cool. Uh, so, yeah. Good. Otherwise, I'm definitely hitting my casual part of the year but i'm starting to get my gaming groove back and uh i'm i'm starting to enjoy it again excellent um, and con- control can be thanked for that excellent thank you control yay uh <laughs> speaking of the games I haven't changed much have you seen much of uh wwe 2k20 what they've been showing off yep it looks the same it does look <laughs> the same um i think the graphics engine is going to remain the same uh, yeah it, it does definitely need an upgrade soon i think it does i mean the footage they've shown looks looks well, it doesn't look great at all. It, look, it looks like WWE 2K19. Yeah, and all, all this the stuff is all a bit outdated as well. Like, so, but off Buddy Murphy, who's got his old entrance theme, which in my opinion is a good mm. thing because anyone it sucks. It's awful. Yeah, it's, why, yeah. Why put the guitar in there? It sucks. Yeah, it's like and here's an Elias as well. Why change them? They're good before. Why would you change them to shitty ones? Yeah, uh, I know. It's bizarre <laughs> to me. But, yeah, and um, then, not only that, but they had to turn off uh, Kevin Owens, who's got like still being booed and got like a heel entrance. It's like, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I mean, I know these things can be changed and there are changes that are being made this year because obviously with the split from Ukes, who are the long-time mm. partner for the WWE franchise. Yes. And um, what they've said is they're changing the way the game plays to make it more accessible for new players. Right, okay. And I'm fine with it yeah. because, I mean, I've been playing the games for years, so, the, you know, the controls are just natural to me now. But if right. anybody new who picks that game up, like, the controls are hard. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Like small children play, like watch WWE, but if they went to play that game, they wouldn't have a clue how to play it because it's there's like four million different buttons for stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I think a simplified control scheme will definitely work out for the better. Yeah, definitely, I think so. But uh, I tell you what is crap is the or looks terrible and makes the game look terrible. You know the the trailer that they did with Becky Lynch coming through the glass ceiling. Oh, yeah. Cool trailer, but the gameplay they showed made it look like a PS2 game. <laughs> yeah, it didn't look great. I could have picked something better. You've got like Becky doing an exploder sort of very gingerly <laughs> out of the corner and then Roman doing a very jagged Superman punch. Yeah. And it's like, this looks like here comes the pain. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. But here not come, as good. Here comes the pain HD. Can we have that, please? Just make that. Make, make it yeah, the pain again. That. That'd be great, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, just do that. That'd be all right. Yeah. I'll be okay with that. Uh, yeah, me too. That was the last really good one, wasn't it? Yeah, for sure. That'd be the last PS2 one. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Cool. Um, right, that's about it for that stuff. Uh, we've got some gaming news. A lot of gaming news. Ooh. Uh, so Nintendo, Nintendo Direct has happened. It did happen. And yes. It happened in a big way. Oh, yeah. A lot of stuff shown off. Um, talk about that briefly. Um, the first thing, well, one of the things to show was the new, the new uh, Animal Crossing, and I've got New Horizons, which looks adorable. Yeah, I'm not a, an Animal Crossing guy, but people like, like been 
pestering Nintendo <laughs> for it for ages. So they finally caved in and they're making it, and I'm happy for those that that play it. Yeah, I I, I didn't play it for a long time. The first one I played was on the 3DS, uh, which I got totally addicted to. It's so it's like a nice, cute game, no stress involved. It's like just build a village and make everyone happy. Yay! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A happy game, no suicide involved on that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I know. I will, I will pick this up at some point for sure. It's so fun. Yeah. Uh, a show of more uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yeah, and, I'm uh, excited for that. Definitely. Yeah. Looks like Pokemon. I'm yeah. okay with that. <laughs> it looks like Pokemon, and that is pretty much all we need to know about it. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, show a couple of new Pokemon. Uh, there's new stuff like you can make food, like give yourself stat increases, and like customize your character and things like that, which is new. Doesn't sound like much, but it's new for Pokemon, so yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the uh, days. Yeah. Uh, it showed off Overwatch on the Twitch. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, that's big. Yeah, it's pretty big. Who does um, that? I mean, fair enough. I mean, <laughs> yeah. people want it, then that's cool. I mean, it's been out for ages now, and people. It's still one of the biggest games in the world from a an esports perspective and <laughs> just a general playing perspective. And if they can, um, if they can, if it runs great, then yeah, cool. Yeah, it makes sense. Being able to play Overwatch on like handouts, pretty insane. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love Overwatch. I don't think I'm going to bother with it, but um, I think it'll be great. I, I, I do. I, I mean, I love the Switch anyway. I'm a big, big fan of it. It's oh, just, yeah. um, you know, with so many games coming out, especially around this time of year. I mean, Overwatch is out in a month's time. Yeah, yeah. Man. So they're getting it out there pretty quick. But yeah, it's it's probably too much to. Uh, for right now, uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll probably stick to the PS4 version if I do go back. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, sure. More Luigi's Mansion Three, which still looks excellent. Yeah, that'll be great as well. Yep. Yeah, the ones would say about it really, and then it looks great, and then one lit. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like Luigi's Mansion. I think. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it will be very good. I mean, we all know that the the standard of <clears> Nintendo <throat> exclusives is incredibly high. Oh yeah, I think it drops and in. Um, Luigi's Mansion will be no different. Oh yeah, absolutely. It shows new uh, mini games you can play, but up to like eight players. Like I don't have eight friends, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah, for sure. Really, really looking. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I don't know if I'll pick it up straight away, but um, I think it will definitely be one I'll look at probably around Christmas time. Yeah, it's all right. Then good, uh, Christmasy game, or Halloweeny game. Yeah. Um, it's all showed off. Uh, well, they announced that Banjo Kazooie is going to be in Smash right now. That's been released. It's on. Uh, on the store right now you can buy and play with magic kazooie it's pretty awesome yeah and of course if you've got the the uh, smash fighters pass you know you can download them using that i guess as well yeah yeah that's on there and they also announced the last character to be uh added to, the, to that uh fighter pass which is uh terry bogard from final fight cool yeah i guess yeah yeah it's cool i've, I've not played I like, I like terry just fine yeah i've never played final fight myself but uh i know it's a big huge franchise people which people love and uh yeah it's good yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, uh, I like, I like, you know, there's so many different franchises, you know, involved with Smash. I think it makes perfect yeah. sense for the SNK Final Fight series to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah, why not? Um, but um, what was interesting to me is that they announced that that isn't the end. Oh no, it's gonna be, it's gonna be at least one more fight to pass. And I think by the by the end by the end of uh, the life cycle, it's gonna be like a thousand different <laughs> characters you can play as. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Awesome. I mean, the, yeah. the roster's huge, um, but it's great. Uh, I love that the the attention to detail that they put into putting these. They're not just like avatars. They're you know, they're characters with their own stages and personalities and traits. And I think that's really really great. Yeah, so good. I don't think us like Smash really is there. Like this is a massive crossover game which everyone loves. It's like so good. I'm sorry, but you're forgetting PlayStation All Stars Battle Royal. Oh my god, of course. Yeah, how could I forget? It's a excellent game. <laughs> Uh, boy. Did you hear they're making a yeah. second one? Yeah, I saw that. I was like, why bother? We already got Smash. You don't need another one. Come on. You know, it's not easy. Whatever you make, it's not going to be as good as Smash. It's just like, just, just don't No, bother. literally, no. <laughs> no it's, it's not going to be. It's just um, Smash for a PlayStation audience, but not as good. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, weird. Um, mm. oh, they also added um, a costume for your me, which is uh, Sans from Undertale, which is what a lot of people are asking for. Oh yeah, people are going cool. crazy for that. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. The people have been wanting yeah. him like as like a character, but like they're like, oh, we can't make him as a character, but here's like a cool costume you can put on your me. And yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a cool compromise, I think. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, it also showed off uh, all the announced that Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Rogue will be coming soon onto Switch, like an HD cool. collection. 
which is cool. Good games. I think Black Flag is probably my favorite Assassin's Creed so far. Yeah, Black Flag's absolutely awesome because uh, they recently brought Assassin's Creed three uh, to Switch as well. Uh, uh, yeah. I haven't seen it in action. I can only assume that it works well enough that yeah. they're able to bring Black Flag and Rogue to Switch as well. So, yeah, cool. Hey, look, more more games on the Switch, the better. Oh yeah, it gets a lot of crap for oh another port, another <laughs> port. But you know, there are people who have a Switch that don't own an Xbox or a PS4, so that they've not actually had the experience of these games before. Yeah. You know, the Nintendo consoles, you know, for, you know, a lot are bought as family consoles. Yeah, like the Wii was and stuff like that. So, uh, I don't really have an issue with these games being ported to the Switch because there's still a very healthy flow of, you know, uh, Nintendo exclusives and you know, other games for the Switch as well. So, more games the merrier. Like, just go and play whatever you want to fucking play. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking of remasters and re-releases, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, um, which is originally a Wii game, is being remastered and put on the Switch. Um, one cool. of the mo- that, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of call for that as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's one of, one of the best JRPGs of the last couple of gens, easily. It's so good. And uh, good to see again the, the full like remaster treatment, like new character models, new you know environments, things like that, new mm. content. I saw some um, I saw some chatter on the internet about people wanting um, Xenoblade Chronicles X as well. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. I know, but I didn't actually play that one, so it'd be cool to, cool to see on there. Which one's uh, that? Is that the one from the Wii U, or is that the uh, yeah, that's 3DS? A, yeah, that's a Wii U one, that one. Um, yeah, it's a bit different from the uh, original, I think. It went a different direction with it. Um, I have it, but never got around to playing it, as I do with most of my games. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll be excited about that again if they do re-release it. And, cool, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Catering for stuff. their fans, that's good. The yeah. Nintendo are listening. Absolutely. Um, and yes, another uh, re-release, remastered thing. It's a Tokyo Mirage set. Wait, I'll start, I'll start again. Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE Encore, <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, so Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions was a uh, Fire Emblem and Sin Megami uh, uh, crossover. Uh, Two of my favourites. Yeah, of course. Time. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's actually a really good game. Really, really good JRPG. Uh, so you good to see that yet another game like that come to Switch. This is be remastering all the JRPGs on Switch right now, which I'm okay with. <laughs> Again, but there must there must be a call for it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. People love them. The, the only problem I have, right, with these games being re-released on Switch, and it isn't the fact that they're being re-released on Switch, that's fine. It's the price. Yeah, that's the problem with Nintendo games, isn't it? It's always super expensive, and then never on sale. Who the fuck <laughs> is paying 30 quid for Resident Evil 4? <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I think 5 and 6 coming out soon as well, so no one's going to pay that much for 6. Like, come on, no, 5 you, maybe, you, but not 6. If come you on. put them out, like, 30 quid for all of them, 1, yeah. 2, sorry, 1, 5, well, 1, 4, 5, and 6, then okay. Yeah, sure, why not? But not <laughs> 30 quid each. That is pretty insane. <laughs> it's ridiculous. What are you, you doing, Nintendo? Like five and six. In fact, four, five, and six were on Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, exactly. It lasts like, what, three pounds a month or something? Stupid. Yeah, it's, just, <laughs> it's just nothing. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, I don't know. The, the, the pricing is very baffling, it's... especially for, like, digital. Yeah, it's weird. In fact, in, in general, you know, I'm, I, I, I call it Switch tax, but because that's what it is. <laughs> Switch tax, basically, yeah. Nintendo yeah. tax. Nintendo tax, yeah. Uh, weird. Uh, and yet another, speaking of re-releases, yet another one, uh, Jedi Knight 2, uh, Jedi Outcast, I think it's called, something like that, Star Wars. Oh yeah, cool, I saw this actually. <laughs> yeah. I got I a little I... bit of a boner for it, to be honest. Fair play, fair play. Uh, I know I played, played it, I'm not a Star Wars guy myself, but uh, it's alright, playing lightsaber around, looks fun. Yeah, that's, that's, all you, that's, that's all it needs to be, fun. Yeah, why not? Um, I think they're bringing them out because obviously, you know, you've got that, the new Star Wars game coming out on the main consoles later on this year. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, which looks great. So you may as well capitalize on the popularity of Star Wars because, of course, there's a new movie coming out as well. So um, you'll see, you you might see that a lot, actually, uh, quite a bit of Star Wars going on over the yeah. next few months. Cool. Fair play. Um, I think the big one, the big one for me especially, which no one saw coming, um, Deadly Premonition 2 on the Switch exclusive. Mm. Like, what? How? How has this game gotten a sequel? <laughs> I, I, I didn't see that coming at all. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. I mean, I love Deadly Permission, but like, how the hell did that game get a sequel of all things? Why now? <laughs> yeah, like, I, the, I don't know who's asked for it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean I'd love a sequel, but I'm just, like, I never expected it. It's so, so weird. And the original has been released, released on and is available to buy right now. Deadly Permission Origins, they've called it. 
Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, fifty-eight pounds on Oof, Switch due to Switch tax. I'm joking; it's not that much. It's not okay. <laughs> yeah, it's probably, it's probably, probably not far off. To be fair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's maybe we maybe want to play through Daily Bonus again. Um, I'll probably play through it on PS3 because I've had it on there for ages, and uh, also Platinum Trophy in it for me if I do. So I might play that. I might stream it actually. That could be fun with the stream. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Just a just a weird game. Just a weird but also good but also bad but also good game. <laughs> it's one of those games that's like impossible to explain to people. It's like yeah, it's a game, you're, that, did, it's a game that doesn't warrant a sequel. Yeah, it's like you, you're this, uh, your detective is like a voice inside your head. Start talking to this guy called Zach, but it's in, like inside your head. Like all these weird <laughs> things happen at night, and you drive around this town. It's like this. It's, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but apparently somebody wanted a sequel, so <laughs> here we are. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> It's weird, awesome, weird and awesome at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> For fuck's sake. And the last oh, thing. Nintendo never change. Never yeah. Change. <laughs> Please never change. Not change your prices, but oh yeah, else. change that. But nothing else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, they also showed off the uh, SNES games coming to Nintendo Online finally. Yeah, yeah they're, they're there now as well. Yeah, they're right now. Um, the list of games are Super Mario World, excellent. Super Mario World Two, excellent. Super Mario Kart, which you can play online. Awesome. Excellent. Stream coming soon, I'm sure. One hundred percent. I'm absolutely buzzing for that. Right, the fact oh, yeah. that you can now play this ancient game online. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. so, so good. Uh, what's got Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past? Excellent game. Super Metroid? Excellent game. Star Fox? Excellent game. <laughs> F Zero? Very good. Stunt Race FX? Never heard of it. I'm sure it's good. Uh, Pilot Wings? Shrug. Uh, Kirby Stream. Never heard of Pilot Wings. I'm not. Is it good? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Kirby Stream Land 3, good stuff. Kirby Stream Course, which is like a multiplayer golf game, kind of, which is playable online, so we have to do that as well. Yeah, cool. Uh, Super Ghosts and Ghouls, which is Hardest Balls, but fun. Cool. <laughs> uh, or Ghouls and Ghosts, sorry, I got backwards. Um, Demon's Crest, which again is super hard, I think. Uh, super Soccer, sports. Uh, yep. Super Poyo Poyo 2, which is like a puzzle game, uh, sort of like Tetris, but not. Um, yeah, I've been playing Puyo Puyo Champions with oh, yeah? Kaylee recently, actually. Oh, it's nice. really good. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Brother Fire, which is a JRPG, one for me. Uh, Brawl, uh, Brawl Brothers, which I've never heard of, but it's probably good. Shrug. Yeah, probably. I mean, <laughs> they've obviously picked them carefully, haven't they? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Super EDF Earth Defense Force. Uh, the only Earth Defense Force game I know was on the 360 and was terrible. Um, uh, that, <laughs> they, they said, that was on Xbox Live Gold recently, actually. Oh, was it really? Oh, weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think it was an easy, easy like a thousand points, which is why people played it. Ah, right. Okay. Well, that makes perfect sense. It looked terrible, to be honest. And I was like, I'm yeah. not like, downloading that shit. This is, this is, uh, what's the last two were? Uh, Super Tennis. Tennis is good, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Joe and Mac 2, which is like a platformer, I think. Cool. So SNES games are on Switch now, which is great. Yeah. And you play online. Awesome. Yeah, that's even cooler. The one disappointing thing here <coughs> is now Nintendo said they're not going to be bringing them out monthly. They're oh. bringing them out basically whenever the fuck we want to bring them out. Oh. Boo. Yeah, that that's, that's, that's typical Nintendo. It's, yeah. it's, like, it's like, here's a bunch of stuff, but now go fuck yourself. That's, yeah. uh, that's, 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 that's what you get. It is, it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, you wanted all this? Oh, you've moaned about it for so long? Well, here it is. And it isn't coming for ages now, <laughs> dickheads. <laughs> fuck you. That's what, that's what Nintendo are like now. Pretty much. <laughs> um, it's like but, what they'll do is they'll put an achievement system in, but they'll put it in for like one game or something. Yeah. Oh, you wanted achievements? Well, now there's achievements on Mario. No other games. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. They would do like three achievements per game. <laughs> like beat the game, beat the game on hard, and get all collectibles. <laughs> beat the game on super hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but hey, if they release them in chunks like they did like this lot, then that wouldn't be too bad. At least like five games at once or something. Yeah, sure. Yeah. We're moaning for no reason, to be fair. Pretty much. Because yeah. going to have all the time to play all these SNES games anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's very true. <laughs> but awesome that we get them, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing them. Yeah, And seeing sure, yeah. more. Cool, that's pretty much it for gaming news. Oh no, they did they show off the uh, weird fitness hoop thing. Which is, <laughs> yeah, it's like Wii Fit, but it's a circle. I don't know. Yeah, I don't get it. I mean, <laughs> um, the trailer showed just people gyrating and stretching. Yeah, with like a weird hoop thing with Joy Cons attached. <laughs> this is just another bizarre Nintendo thing that they think people want that they actually do not want. Yeah, I mean, it could be, I don't know. It's making people you know, get an exercise. It could be fun, I guess. Go to the fucking gym. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Who's gym? 
<laughs> it's like, oh, you want you want achievements on your games? Cool. Well, here's a hoop to work out <laughs> with in your living room. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, speaking of working out, um, uh, Mario and Sonic at the Olympics looks interesting. The new it one looks great, actually. I'm so yeah, excited. Yeah. I love that they've put the uh, like the sprites in. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. Like it's sort of the um, the trailer had like Sonic super like suplexing uh, Princess Peach. Like, well, there's something I never thought I'd see. <laughs> 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 It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the fact that Sonic and Mario in the same game is like, get back 20 years and tell me that's going to happen. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah. It's like crazy. And then if you add that, if you add the Olympics into that, <laughs> yeah, it's it makes it even weirder. It's so <laughs> it's weird. Like, yeah. But um, hey, I love those games. So I'm really yeah. excited for that one. I love an Olympics game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one. I, that's, a, that's a game that I have been playing that I didn't mention actually. Oh, yeah. I downloaded this weird game called Smoots Summer Games. Right. Okay. And it's like, a budget track and field, <laughs> but it plays really well and it's super fucking fun. Oh, awesome. Like, insanely fun. So go and have a look at that. It's, and uh, that's an easy platinum trophy as well. Oh, sweet. Bonus. <laughs> or a thousand game score, whatever you play. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, if we can play that online, that'd be another, one, another good one to stream. Definitely, yeah. I love yeah. the Olympics. You'll awesome. hear us blowing out of our asses online. Like, <laughs> smashing bits <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like, are you just... gaming right now? Or <laughs> yeah. <something> <laughs> Don't come in! Don't come in! <laughs> I'm always one. I'm always there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, got filthy minds. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the other thing was uh, Lion King and Aladdin remakes last re-releases coming out. Yeah, them games are hard as fuck. Yep, <laughs> really fun. Um, you got the Snedda Mega Drive version of Lion King and the Mega Drive version of Aladdin and like the Game Boy Super Game Boy versions. Yeah, that's weird. They've not put the uh, the the SNES version of Aladdin on there. Yeah, it's because of Capcom. Capcom owned that, and yeah, couldn't get couldn't get their permission, I guess. Capcom Shrug. probably just going to re-release, like remake it and re-release the super reviews. <laughs> probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that'd be cool. I, I, I will pick. I will pick that up. But I'm oh, yeah. torn as to what I'm going to get it on. I don't know whether I'm going to get it on the Switch. Hmm. Which for me would be the perfect console for it, or whether I want to earn achievements for it on the Xbox. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I want to get on PS4 just because platinums. Right, just if, it has, if it has a platinum, hopefully it does. Hopefully it yeah, good luck getting the platinum on the Lion King. <laughs> oh yeah, true. I hope it does have platinum because it's like Sonic Mania didn't have a platinum, and I'm still salty about that. It's like, <laughs> I don't know why it didn't have a platinum either. It doesn't make yeah, any sense. So weird. It's such a yeah. good game. I don't know. Like, like meanwhile, my name is Mayo is sitting there with a platinum trophy. Uh, <laughs> Which yeah. stacks as well. Yeah, it's uh, stupid. Anyway, I think that's pretty much all I've got for video games, unless you've got something to add. No. Cool. Right. That means, <laughs> <laughs> fair play. So that brings us to uh, the wrestling. And wrestling! Wrestling! And, gives, and there's a lot to, talk, lot to talk about, once again. Yeah. Oh, snap. Um, I don't think we need to go through the results. I don't think we no. need to go, like, uh, match by match, uh, analysing it like Meltzer. I know we'll be we'll be all night if we do. Um, yeah, this will be day. like a four-hour podcast. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what, what do you think of? Uh, let's go through AEW first. What do you think of uh, All Out in general? I thought it was okay. Hmm. Yeah, um, that, I don't think it was any better than okay. I thought it was okay. Yeah, I mean, people are losing their mind over over stuff. But like, I thought it's fine. I guess, I guess a lot of it's like you know, I'm we're both WWE guys. I mean, we're both used to that kind of wrestling. Yeah. Uh, this is like a different style of wrestling. It's like. It's actually like going to take, going to take some uh, getting used to, for sure. Yeah. Because I was watching it, I was like, yeah, this is this is decent. But I wasn't like super drawn in like I was with like uh, TakeOver. No. Um, I, I th- and of, of that weekend, I definitely think TakeOver was the better show. Oh, yeah. But I mean, I thought AEW was fine. I, I, I thought it was fine enough. Um, but that's all I... I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that style of wrestling. That, to me, not, not the issue... I just, uh, I don't know what it is. I, I'm yeah. really struggling to give a shit. That's the, that, I think <laughs> that's the, that's the big thing that I've got at the minute. You know? Yeah, I was, I'm doing the same. It's like, I mean, the ladder match was excellent, but it's like at the same time, I don't know. Something is, something was off about it. I think like, all the spots they were doing was like, looks cool, but also at the same time, stupidly dangerous. Like, uh, one mistake and he's just, you're just dead. It's like. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I mean, yeah. Meltzer went out there and said that it was quite possibly the greatest ladder match of all time. I disagree. Um, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I do as well, but uh, it was great, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. I mean, the, those guys, they're, they're risking themselves because 
gifts. That's why. <laughs> yeah, like the way Matt Jackson fell off the ladder, like hit his legs on the ropes and like flipped over. It's like Jesus Christ, like so easy could have gone wrong. Yeah, these little <laughs> spots made into gifts and be like, wow, look what AEW are doing. Yeah. I mean, it's great. TV and coming up soon. Look at what happens. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, I'll be, wa- I mean, be watching either way, but it, you know, more wrestling is good. And hopefully I'll get used to it as I walk it, watch it weekly. But uh, yeah, so it's just off about it for me right now. Yeah, I just, I want, I think when it goes to TV, I think it'll be better because yeah. I need, I'm not, I understand where they're going, but like they announced uh, that Cody Rhodes is going to be challenging Chris Jericho for the championship at uh, their full full gear pay per view. Mm. Shit name, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean, so the, and the logic that people on the internet seem to be going with is because Cody has won the most matches. Yeah, but it's also like a big part of AEW. It's like Shane McMahon being in, in the main event, which everyone hates. Uh, and now Cody put himself in the eight in the main event, and it's like, oh yeah, Cody, yeah. You're like, uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he. I don't. I don't think he'll win it. But I, I understand. I understand where they're coming from from a sports perspective. Yeah. But I need them to, to come out and explain that. Yeah, it needs more. By the reason, don't just announce a pay per view and then announce matches for it before you've even started TV. Yeah. And by the way, I'm you not. Know? I'm not comparing like Shane Man to Cody. By the way, internet. Just before you lose your mind. <laughs> yeah, Shane Man is a much better wrestler. Hey, of course, okay. yeah, he's, he's the uh, best in the world. As you know. Yeah, don't worry about it. You're welcome, Internet, by the way. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm uh, I'm very much on the fence with it at the minute. I want it to be really great. And if they're going down the sports route of wins and losses matter, and that that's completely fine as well. But they need to have a system in place, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just throwing matches together. It's like when they announced the TV tapings and the cities that they were doing the tapings in, I don't think they needed to announce anything i think they would have could have just announced we're doing tv here here and here and tickets would have sold anyway yeah yeah it's like it's like yeah i mean they announced that jericho was going to be defending the aew championship on one of the episodes of tv before the pay-per-view oh weird and then <laughs> they announced the pay-per-view and they announced chris jericho versus cody rhodes uh, so chris jericho is obviously retaining that belt on tv yeah yeah that's and now weird. wwe do that where they go oh these people are fighting for the the ic title or whatever and you know full well that they're not going to fucking lose the ic title before the pay-per-view <laughs> yeah. but you know i just i don't know i just think there needs to be a bit more thinking there um because yeah fine so jericho's going to defend the title okay cool but don't announce your pay-per-view match first yeah, What's the, yeah. Why, why why do it it's stupid it needs, more, it needs more build up, I think. It's like, as soon as all that ended, they announced the next match, set of matches for the next baby. It's like, give it time. Let, let, let them build it up first. Let, yeah. people, let, let people recover from all out and then you know, like, start announcing matches. Yeah. I mean, they're going to sell tickets regardless. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, so they don't need to. They don't need to be announcing matches. Chris Jericho versus Cody Rhodes, to me, <laughs> I don't give a shit about that match. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I couldn't I'd, care less. It's like, I don't mind Cody, but it's like, uh, like the Cody versus um, Don the Linger, whatever his name is now. Um, uh, yeah, Sean Spears. Yeah, it's like I just it's like fine. I was like they're both they're both good wrestlers, but just like good wrestlers. It's like if the like, Cody versus uh, Dustin was amazing, like because they had that chemistry. But I don't know, Cody and uh, Sean Spears just like they're too similar. I think it's like it just didn't gel. Also, their feud made no sense. <laughs> it's like I hit you with the chair. I, we're fighting now. Okay, I want to hit you with the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> End of story. Then, yeah, you know, then Cody wins and he's, you know, got the most wins in AEW or whatever, and then he's <laughs> fighting for the championship. Yeah. But there's there's three lots of TV before that pay-per-view. So what if Cody was to, I don't know, they need to explain how wins and losses are working. So is, there's got, is there a cutoff point for the wins? And then that qualifies them for the next pay-per-view? It, they need to explain it more. They, they just need to give us a reason to give a shit about people winning and losing. Yeah, absolutely. Like if, um, if I knew winning and losing was going to count towards Cody fighting Jericho at full gear, I don't want Sean Spears to win, so someone else can fight Jericho. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, I just I'm uh, I need more consistency, and I know that we'll get it when TV rolls around. Yeah, hopefully. But at the minute, Jericho is the saving grace of AEW. Yeah, Jericho's great. One main problem: uh, Judas Elbow sucks. He's the worst finisher I've seen in a long time. It's just yeah, like, Andrade <laughs> does it every week on SmackDown. I was going to say, yeah, Andrade does it. It makes it look way better, and it is in the finisher. It's like, <laughs> I say, what's wrong with the Walls of Jericho? Just keep doing that. Come yeah, what's on. wrong with the Codebreaker? Yeah. Ugh. 
annoying. No, I'm with <laughs> you. I, I don't like it either. But yeah, um, I, was uh, like, I just think it's funny as well that it, like, like it's got a brand new promotion. Want to push these new stars? It's like new like indie stars going to push them to the top. So the first ever AW champion is a 48 year old ex WWE guy. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, AW. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm. I, I understand why they've put the belt on Jericho. Yeah, I mean, Jericho's great. I, Jericho. I get it. I get it. Right, he's, Chris Jericho is a big star. Um, Hangman Page, in my opinion, nowhere near that level yet. Uh, yeah. Most people don't know who he is. Yeah, I, I'm super boy AEW. I've never heard of him. So, uh, I understand why Jericho is the champion um, going into TV. But, uh, I don't know. I, there's, people are losing their minds over how great AEW is, but at the minute, I'm struggling to see it. Yeah, I think it's, me too. I think it's good, but it's just another wrestling company right now. They're not doing anything that um, would make me turn off WWE to watch AEW. Yeah. Like, like give me NXT over AEW any day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right now. Yeah. I think, in my opinion, I think uh, Park versus Omega would have been, could have been an awesome main event if, like, given more time. Because, like, they had a good match, but it could have been amazing match if they like had a full like half hour or whatever to like put on like show what they can do yeah but uh i don't know who knows you see the announcement of moxley versus omega at full gear that makes sense because they didn't yeah. get to have their match and they you know they had genuine feud going on over the course of the shows that they've been doing yeah absolutely and that's gonna be a great so, match as well i'm sure yeah I, I think you say they should have saved their their title match announcements for tv give us a yep. reason to keep watching and build to, towards the pay per view. Yeah, I agree. But hey, I'm looking, looking forward to the TV. Look forward to being more, a little bit more consistent, and hopefully, uh, I can get more used to it, and it will get better as it goes along. Yeah, um, I, th yeah. I think it needs a critical eye, though. To be honest, I mean, I think the internet is very much blinded by anti WWE a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, it needs that critical eye. It needs that bit of reality. It needs somebody to to come out and say, "Look, it's good, but it's not like mind blowing." Yeah. It's going to take a while to get to that level. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I, I do agree, yeah. It needs more consistency. Uh, we need to know more about the superstars that are going to be performing on the shows. Um, I think the women's division has the potential to be excellent. Mm. But uh, I don't know. At the minute, I'm I'm very much on the fence with it. Yeah, as long as uh, Brandy Rose is in the main event, I'm good. Uh, yeah. yeah. So as far as starting a revolution is concerned, um, <laughs> it started off you know, with just a couple of people with cardboard signs <laughs> Pretty outside, much. Of, outside of Stamford headquarters. Yeah. And then the uh, Joker goes and loses his belt. Well, I'm Joker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, too much of the oh, bubble yeah. air. A little bit of the bubble air. Um, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I mean, that's been great this week. I mean, again, that's, that's Jericho being, being Jericho. I don't know how he gets these things over. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, it's just amazing to me how he keeps reinventing himself and keeps being fresh even as a 40, 48 year old man, I mean, you, you know, you're right. You know, he's a 48 year old man, but at the same time, it's Chris Jericho. He keeps reinventing himself and keeping himself fresh. And I guess as long as he, as long as that's the thing with him, his act isn't stale. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's always going to be you no know, great. He's Chris Jericho. He's going to have to get Yeah, it's like if it was Triple H, Triple H's act hasn't changed in 30 <laughs> years nearly. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. you know, if it's Triple H, and he's the first ever champion. You're like, oh, for fuck's sake. But Jericho, um, although I'm sure there's many ways they could have gone. They could have put it on Omega. They could have put it on Cody straight away. But I think they haven't because those guys have too much to do with the company, like, behind the scenes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But uh, Anyway, yeah, Omega would yeah, be bottom of the ring. He doesn't even want a match. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. This is, this... Give us a league table, like an <laughs> AEW league table. And, you know, divisions. Yeah, why not? Make it a bit more, a bit different, wouldn't it? It would make it different, and it would make it interesting to watch as well, because yeah. then you would, you'd have your favourites, and you would give a shit about who wins and loses. Exactly, yeah. Hmm, interesting. Maybe it's a buggy for uh, their creative team. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Get it on commentary as well. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, why not? Just... Get rid of, I like, don't have JR, I'll have me and Excalibur, that'd be all right. Yeah, it'd be great, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's all out. It was, it was okay. It was decent. Fine, yeah. yeah. Um, cool. So, to talk about uh, NXT takeover. Yeah, NXT yeah. takeover was great. <clears throat> oh yeah, 
It's so good. Um, match to match for match, it was better than AEW. Uh, yes, I agree. Um, and I just think all around it was just better. And considering that NXT UK is considered a developmental brand, <laughs> I think they pretty much showed wrestling up that weekend. Uh, yeah, they outshined the main master by a long way. Yeah, uh, um, <laughs> I would say they outshined AEW. There's more people talking about. I mean, the only thing that's come out of AEW that they're talking about the bubbly thing. Oh yeah, a bit of bubbly. Uh, and the Canadian destroyer from the ladder, but Oof. you know, people like even like ex pros, like they they've all been sort of tweeting about how great Walter versus Tyler Bate was yeah. for the championship, and Insane. it was. I mean, Jesus, man, it was it was fucking phenomenal. Yeah, it's like one of those things where like we pretty much knew Walter was going to retain, but at the same, but while we we're watching, they're watching it. It like, really looked like Tyler was going to win at a certain points. Like, what is it going to win? It was yeah. so good. Like just the way they it, told the stories as well. It's, uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it was the perfect forty-five minute wrestling masterpiece yes agreed and i don't think that is being um over the top either i think that is 100 percent accurate yeah and both these guys have like huge huge features in wwe if they don't fuck it up um <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just yeah both show that they can be top level they can be rest that could be a wrestlemania main event someday and like, that they... was better than the wrestlemania main event <laughs> yeah well yeah yeah that's fair in fact, it's probably better than the wrestlemania main event for the last few years <laughs> Yeah, winter, yes, you're right. You have to I love right. that. I love that Hogan Andre type standoff before the uh, before the announcement before that the ring announcements. Oh yeah, because cool. obviously Walter is huge in comparison to Tyler Bate, <laughs> and you know that that's that stare down. I loved that. I thought that was awesome. The crowd were hot. I mean, I was I was the oh, yeah. person to yeah. experience it, and it was amazing. Cause... But um, it was just I don't know. It was it was a very special match to 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 witness. Yeah, the crowd, the crowd is amazing as well. Like you said, like all the chants and things that they're going up with. It's oh, so yeah. funny. <laughs> Walter so is a wanker. Walter is a wanker. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it just told a perfect story. I mean, you could say the same for a lot of the other matches on the card as well. I mean, the, ta- the tag team match was great. I mean, tag team oh, matches yeah, in NXT so usually are always great. But yeah. this one, that one was really good. And again, you know, you didn't think that Mark Andrews and Flash Morgan Webster were going to win. Yeah, hometown heroes, and uh, so yeah, did it. Finishes, and yeah. you know, then, then they eventually won, and it was great. So good. Or does Cesaro versus uh, Dragonoff? Amazing. Oh, unbelievable! Yeah. Yeah, Cesaro um, is amazing. He doesn't deserve to be losing to the Miz on fucking SmackDown. Oh, no, for fuck's sake! Why? I don't, that annoyed me to be honest. Yeah, he, me he, too. He like, stuff. <laughs> he, earned, he earned all the plaudits on the Saturday night with that match against Dragonoff. Yeah. Uh, as did Dragonoff, rightly so as well. Oh yeah, he's, he's, awesome. he's great. He's great. And then it comes to Raw on Monday and he fucking loses to the Miz. Uh, Are you kidding me? <laughs> if, if Miz beats Nakamura for the IC title, I'm going to lose my mind. If that, <laughs> that can't happen, please. Please, WWE. Please, Miz Vince, come on. nothing of worth recently either. He's yeah. awful. It's, as a face, he's hot garbage. As a, as a heel, great. As a face, no. He's... Yeah, the, the, he's not likable because he's a fucking douchebag in real yeah. life. Because the problem with Miz is he's not a good wrestler at all. And as a, as a heel, they can kind of uh, mask that with like slapping a cocky arsehole. Kind of, so it kind of works. But as a face, yeah. all, all that's left as a face is your bad, bad, bad wrestler and nothing else. It's like, <laughs> it's, like it's nothing there. Yeah. Ugh, it's so bad. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. And um, I, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't, I, I think personally, Cesaro would have been you know it would have been great to have him do a stint in nxt uk for a bit yeah have him on nxt nxt uk why not it'd be great why not yeah why not because let's be fair he's doing nothing on tv yeah like main tv so have him be a major factor in nxt uk for a bit yeah instead of the miz versus nakamura why not cesaro versus nakamura how much better would that be as a match it'd be oh, it'd be much better as a <laughs> it'd <match>. be amazing <laughs> uh, god damn it i just don't i don't get it yeah I don't different. get it with the Miz. I really don't. Um, again, great heel, terrible face. Yep. I can't think of anyone else who's so, so like so good as a heel that was so bad as a face. Like CM Punk. Ah, uh, CM Punk was alright. People, you know, no, people... awful face. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of made sense. People liked actually liked uh, CM Punk, which is you know, no one liked the Miz. CM Punk is <laughs> a dickhead in real life as well. Oh well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, simple was a terrible face in my opinion. That's fair. Uh, cool. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, overall, yeah. takeover was really great. 
Yeah. Uh, the, the, the weakest match on the card was the women's match. I don't think it was great. Um, yeah, it's kind of, kind of expected better because, like, at least you know each other really well. You have to expect a bit more, but it's just too short, I think. I think we won't get enough time. Yeah, probably that, yeah. It ended very abruptly as well. They loved expecting it. I mean, I yeah. when she did the first um, Black Widow onto the ropes, and then when she came back and did it again straight away, I knew that was going to be it, but the live crowd wasn't expecting it. Yeah, it just kind of came out. When they counted three, it was like, ah. Ah, okay. That's it, okay. (laughs) That's the end then, I guess. This match hasn't built at all, really, I suppose. But yeah, it's... Yeah, I mean, it was fine. It it wasn't great, though. That that was the only match that really let it down. Yeah. Uh, Joe Coffey was... uh, Dave Master was cool. Uh, Could he he see anything that was going on in the crowd? (laughs) No. No? uh, Yeah, I think there's any problem with it. Because, like, they went into the crowd and then, like, half the crowd, like, most of the crowd couldn't see what the hell's going on. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that was that was the same throughout the arena. No one could see what was happening. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, until they put it on the big screen, no one could see what was going on. And even then, <laughs> like you couldn't really see. Yeah, like, we saw the first bit where the ring broke, but otherwise, I mean, those matches are made for TV. There's oh, no yeah. two ways about it. But um, it takes it away from the live crowd that can't see. Yeah, it's a shame. shame, but it is what it is. And I pre- I've, I've watched the match back, and it was it was fine for what it was. It was exactly was what right. it needed to be. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it was a shame that we, we couldn't really see it in real time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, good, really good show for all. We really liked it. I'm looking forward to seeing LXC on TV. Please don't ruin it. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> what do you think to um, what do you think to the uh, what do you think to NXT moving to TV? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm getting used to it, I think. At first I was like, oh, God, they're going to ruin it. It's going to be worse. You start hearing about rumours about Vince McMahon getting involved. Uh, but I think all those rumours have been, like, brushed aside now. Triple A's had the interviews. Like, yeah, none of, gonna, none of that is true. The just going to have them to do it still. And, uh, yeah, so I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be right. I think it's going to be safe. I, I mean, think- I think from, from a putting on a TV show perspective and going to live TV, I don't think anybody knows how to do it better than Vince McMahon. Yeah. Uh, that, that's putting the show on. I don't mean writing the show in 2019. Yeah. But Triple A, you know, that's the thing. People were just guessing. Oh, it's going to TV, so Vince McMahon's going to take over. Yeah, yeah. Vince McMahon doesn't have time anymore to do Raw and SmackDown. <laughs> yeah, it's and nice. Bischoff and Heyman. Yeah. Because Vince McMahon's focus is 100% going to be the XFL when the XFL launches next year. Um, and I think um, NXT is going to be fine. Yeah. I think he'll continue with the same sort of format that it is now. It's just going to be longer. And that's only a good thing. Yeah. Um, it's more exposure for the stars. Yeah, well, yeah, I that's mean, always a good thing. I mean, you you know, you've got the Undisputed Era now on primetime TV. Oh, yes. Uh, so all these guys that, you know, now now people might actually watch it. Yeah, hopefully. It deserves, mean, it deserves you, to be watched. <laughs> goes up, more exposure, and you get the same great matches, and you get a WWE alternative to AEW. Yeah, it's great. All good things. Uh, I, think, I think all we see is a bulk in production, and I think I think we will see a little spike in that, but... Um, Beyond that, I think it will still be the same NXT that we know and love. Yeah, good. Uh, speaking of uh, do we network and things, uh, the many two or five live has been talked about getting cancelled, which is a shame. But uh, I, I, I was wondering about two hundred five because, um, <laughs> because SmackDown's moving basically. Yeah, and you know they've moved two hundred five once and to, uh, they they put it on the WWE Network on a Wednesday, didn't they? So they pre-recorded so, yeah. it and didn't have it live, and then they moved it back to live. Yeah, it's at the end of the day, but, uh, it isn't doing very well. Yeah, I think it's one of the least viewed things on the network they were saying, which is a shame. But uh, I was thinking maybe they just take take it off TV to put the put the belt and the guys onto NXT and have this now longer, and have they have an extra belt on NXT and have them, you know fight the cruiserweight title on there. Well, yeah, I mean there's an extra hour on NXT now. Yeah. So I mean you need to fill it with some sort of meaningful content. I mean random matches are fine. Hmm. Um, but you need structure as well. Yeah, I, I think I think the uh, like the full style crowd would be more into the crew matches than like the big arena crowds who are only there to see like Roman Reigns versus I don't know, the Miz or something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I one hundred I one hundred percent agree with you. I think uh, the full sale crowd would be much better for two hundred five or at least cruiserweight matches. Just take the two hundred five out of it and yeah. just put the cruiserweight championship. Just call it the NXT cruiserweight championship. Yeah, why not? That'd be great. Yeah, keep the belt. The same, the same belt that they've got now because it's fine. Yeah, and you can have you can have great cruiserweight matches on NXT instead, and that'd be fine. Yeah, that'd be great. I'll be one hundred percent okay with that. Plus, again, it will give them more exposure because they'll be on national TV as well. 
Yeah. So you make that well, championship mean something, whereas at the minute it means nothing because <laughs> no um, it's on a show that nobody watches uh, and it's always on the pre-show that no one cares about. Yeah, weird. So it's, you know, you, I think you take it off the network, you put it on NXT, um, you don't, you, you, what they need to not do is be like, oh, this is a 205 Live match. <laughs> yeah. It's... They just need to just stamp it down as the Cruiserweight division. Yes, so you could call it the NXT, as you say, NXT Cruiserweight title. Just, uh, yeah, that would be, be, be absolutely perfect. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, um, we've we've fixed you, 205 Live, well done. Thank you, WWE. Yeah, we've fixed 205 Live <laughs> and we've, uh, we've filled time on NXT as well. So yeah, yeah, you're why, why are we just doing this again? Why, we, why do we not have like jobs in wrestling? I know, right? Just, just hire us, please, someone. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, have you heard that they're... So they're gonna be, it's going to be a draft. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did hear about that. Hmm. Um, and it's going to... So I think it's going to be on the second episode of SmackDown. That's going to be on Fox next month. Yeah. I mean, if, I'm okay with it if it actually means you're going to have random people showing up on different shows. Like, if they stick to... to get rid of the bloody wildcard world, which means nothing. And just, just like, have a yeah, two separate brands. That's thing. It's not even a rule. It's just a, it's just a made-up thing. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's bollocks. Yeah. You need to have the brands... Um, different to one another yeah absolutely uh, i can only assume that nxt is going to be part of this draft as well so i um, would imagine that uh, you know I, what you know what i see happening i see the likes of um mike bennett or sorry mike canellis go maybe going to nxt yeah that makes sense um oh. it's just stuff like that stuff like that happening yeah yeah um I mean, I, 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 I imagine the uh, street bothers will go end up on the, the main roster obviously because they've been showing up backstage oh yeah definitely yeah um I just hope they don't ruin it, like, take, like, I don't know, like, um, the Undisputed Era on there, because they're, they're so good at NXT, I don't think they'd be as, work as well in the main roster, not yet, anyway. To be honest, what I see, I I, I don't think Undisputed Era go anywhere. Yeah. I think I think Roderick Strong will beat Velveteen Dream for the United States Championship, sorry, not the United States Championship, the North American Championship on yeah. uh, the first live NXT. Yeah, yeah. And they'll have all the belts, <coughs> and they'll be, like, the, the figurehead the the point of interest for NXT for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, That'd be awesome. What something that people that do need to go back down to NXT Viking Raiders. <laughs> oh yeah, they're, they're meet and drop it every week, and it's like it's fun, fun to watch and everything, but it's they're not really doing anything. The thing is, it's not. It's, I don't even think it is fun to watch now. It's boring because yeah. the, the the live crowd isn't into that shit. It just isn't the Raw and SmackDown crowd. They aren't into that sort of. We always say this though, don't we? We're like, oh, it's really cool for the NXT crowd. And they're really into it. But then you take it out of NXT and you put it on the main <laughs> roster and it dies on its ass. Look yeah. at Adam Rose. Oh, yeah, NXT yeah. I loved it. This... Um, In no way, Jose. Else? No way, Jose. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Breeze. <laughs> yeah. It's good to see Tyler Breeze back at NXT. Like, and, it is, uh, yeah. Bandango. Yeah. And you know that that's they're they're going to sort of be a part of the NXT tag team division, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, because it, but that they can have great matches, and they had one on NXT this week. Yeah, it's great. So, um, there the, there can definitely be some. I mean, there are you know there are people I love to see back in NXT. Sami Zayn doing fuck all, <laughs> yeah. nothing at all. Nagamore's manager, which they did, they should cut a promo on the like the dot com, which is actually really good. Um, so it can work, but. I don't know why they're not letting Nakamura just speak English. He's speaking English just fine. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah, he can speak English just fine. He yeah. just, just tells him, you know, he, he, he can speak English. He yeah. can speak the language. Just let him do it. <clears throat> so weird. So weird. I don't know, <laughs> I think there's, there's, some, there's some people that could do with going to NXT. Hmm. And there are people in NXT that could probably do uh, a good job on the main roster. Yeah, absolutely. So I think we'll see. I think we'll see a shake up. I'd personally like to see Matt Riddle on the main roster. That'd be cool. Bro. Um, uh, maybe Keith Lee. Yeah, man, Keith Lee versus um, oh, who was it? Oh, Dijakovic, man, that was yeah, so good. that Jesus was awesome. Christ, that was good. Fuck. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so there's a there's a lot of mixing up that that could be done. I, mean, I think maybe next week we should do like a fantasy draft. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like uh, who we would have on Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. Yeah, awesome. That's not good to me. Yep. So I'm buzzing for Roman Reigns on NXT and John Cena. Oh, hey, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that'd be great. It'd be, it'd be egg on our face when the Miz gets drafted to NXT. Oh God, please don't. <laughs> John Miz did like main event, wasn't he? We just don't want him. That's another thing they need to cancel. You want to save money? Cancel those shit shows that nobody watches. Yeah, yeah. 
bloody main event. That's anything poor EC3 appears on these days, isn't it? EC3, <laughs> get him back to NXT. Yeah, why, why not? He's doing nothing. Just put him on there. He's great in NXT. People love him. Yeah, he'll, he'll save himself some cardio running around backstage after the <laughs> after the roll-up championship. <laughs> yeah. Uh, poor Drake. One day he'll get there. It annoys me so much that the... I, I like the idea of the 24-7 championship, yeah. but I don't like roll-ups. Yeah, it's just... It's, dude, it's, it's like once or twice, sure, but like every single pin is a roll-up. It's like, come on. Hit someone, yeah. hit someone with a chair or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just stupid. Like, if you did a if you did a schoolboy roll-up in a match, they'd kick out. Yeah, exactly. Just because you do it in a car park doesn't mean they wouldn't kick out. Yeah. I mean, so Drake- it's stupid. Yeah, I mean, Drake's hilarious. All his antics and his hot wife and <laughs> our truth and things. Yeah, uh, I mean, Drake's so been funny. doing... He's genuinely a very good wrestler. Yeah. It's like, I thought... Let he, him wrestle. Yeah, I thought the reason he, he was put on 205 as a general manager was because he was injured or something and he couldn't wrestle anymore. But then he's been getting... He's been wrestling in, like, actual proper wrestling in the ring. Yeah, doing yeah. the same thing. Just like, okay, so he's not injured. He's fine. He can actually wrestle. So what's I mean, did you see <laughs> the, the segment with him and Mike Nellis <laughs> on 205? Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I mean, he looked great. Yeah. So yeah, put him in the Super ring. Super sharp. Uh, <laughs> he, he's very good. I mean, I saw, I saw uh, Drake Maverick wrestle as Spud in Coventry about, <laughs> fucking hell, it's got to be about fourteen years ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> Blimey. Yeah. That's amazing. And and he he's genuinely a very good wrestler. And yeah. Wasted. Again, draft him to two hundred five. Oh, sorry, not 205, sorry, um, NXT. Yeah, why not? That'd be great. Have him have him actually wrestle matches. He can still be the goofy English character that he yeah. is, but just put him in the NXT Cruiserweight division that we've invented today. Yeah, why not? <laughs> that's what I'm going to do with Sid Scarlett as well. Like Sid Scarlett, I thought the same thing. I thought, okay, I guess he can't wrestle anymore. He's general manager or whatever. But then he wrestled a match on this week's NXT UK. Against, yeah, uh, and he had a great match against uh, Cassius Ono. Yeah. It's like, okay, so why, why isn't he wrestling then? <laughs> it's yeah, weird. I know. Bizarre. But so strange. It is. Um, so, <coughs> um, I mean, we're in the build-up now too. So, next week when we do the podcast, we'll be doing predictions for Clash of Champions, which is next weekend. Uh, yep. Um, we'll also do uh, like a little bit of a fantasy draft, which will be interesting. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah, so that's cool. So, we've got a bit of content for next week. Absolutely. What do you think of uh, Bailey turning heel, by the way? Um, if they do it properly, then fine. But mm. she came out of SmackDown doing a normal entrance and stuff like that and smiling. And <clears throat> then they did the heel thing again with Sasha. And I'm, I'm, I was a little bit confused, if I'm being honest. But um, if they pull the trigger properly, then great. Yeah, interesting. I think... Hmm. Because they're playing off the uh, friendship with Bash, um, Basha, <laughs> Bailey and Basha Sasha. Shanks. Yeah, that's the one. <clears throat> Bailey and Sasha. So yeah, I don't know. Are you just only doing it because of Sasha, or are they going to probably go into it and both like turn heel and give a new music and new character and stuff like that? Who knows? Uh, that's what they should do. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, but I think this whole uh, huggable Bailey, yeah, slip like, like ragging you inflatable um, what they were called two mm. men it's yeah. like it's, it's kind of run its course now it's I think like, so yeah I think yeah. it's definitely run its course yeah so it'd be cool to see a, actually be a proper heel yeah I agree um, yeah I, I I yeah I completely agree I can't really say anything else other than that but um, I just hope they do it right and don't fuck it up yeah uh, and who have you got winning the uh, King of the Rings as well getting the tournament Chad Gable. Yeah. I think, I, yeah, a little short jokes and things that have been going on backstage, which he's not short, by the way. He's five foot eight. I'm five foot eight. <laughs> it's not that short. short. Yeah, I guess so. Short, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, the sorty cheek. That, please don't be real. Please don't let that be a thing. Come on, man. If that's the thing, I'm going to be fuming at that. Yeah, I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit wrestling. No, I'm done. Chad Gable is <laughs> super talented, right? He's, he's like so one good. of the most talented guys on the entire roster. Um, again, if they're not going to push him on the main roster, then you just draft him back to NXT. Yeah, why not? And let him be awesome there. Yeah. But he's he's a great wrestler. Um, personality needs work, but I liked him better when he was sort of like the goofy, ready, willing and gable type thing when he was with Jason Jordan, who was yeah, yeah. the face of the earth, by the way. Yeah, and I think he's injured, isn't he? I think he hurt himself. I think so. Yeah. I think he's done. Yeah, and he's some bad, bad neck injury, neck injury, wasn't it? It's was never good. Yeah, no, not at all. Um. But I, I would like to see Chad Gable win it. I really would. Um, but then they have to capitalise on it. If they don't, 
and he just wins it and then he walks around in a fucking cape and scepter um or in a like cape crown with a scepter then then that sucks and it's just king gable and that's shit yeah um, the like person a... who'd be probably best with it uh would be baron corbin oh yeah i agree uh, from the start i'd said uh either baron corbin or chad gable just because chad gable being in there was a bit random i thought if any reason for him to be there is because he could possibly win it and yeah and uh um, yeah or, corbin would be amazing. you know Ricochet was known as King Ricochet before he came to WWE, so that wouldn't be a stretch for them. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and Samoa Joe is Samoa Joe, and it's always awesome. So it's I, I'd say it's pretty open ended at the minute. But I, if um, if I was going with my gut, I would say it's between Chad Gable and Baron Corbin. Uh, yeah, me too. Like uh, Corbin's been great as a heel, like going up on the on like the throne with the cape and kind of like I am King Corbin. It's even changed his name on Twitter to King Corbin. It's, just, <laughs> it's pretty great. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to see him. Living the gimmick, man. Living the gimmick. <laughs> keeping kayfabe alive. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, no, either way would be great with me. Um, it'd be cool to see Gabby Gilda Bush and it'd be cool to see Corbin as a cocky arsehole. As a king. But, I mean, <laughs> not, this is not to take anything away from Elias either because would be would be a fine winner of the King of the Ring. Yeah, he actually had an actual bubble match to change on the what, Smackdown, I think it was. Yeah, with an entrance as well. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, the music sucks now. I don't know why oh, yeah. they have to put sound bites at the beginning of music. Uh, I love like that, like uh, Alice Black's stupid uh, bridge noise, whatever it is, when he oh, just well, sits when he, up. When he comes up online, it's like, like, it's like creaking as it comes it, up. Yeah, it's like, why? It doesn't need to be there. It sounds or stupid. Or Ricochet's gunshot. <laughs> yeah. At least uh, they've dropped the thunder when he takes his hood off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank Christ. <laughs> Let's take his hood off, for fuck's sake. Uh, so and bad. Got, Iconic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know what they have to fuck around with it. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> I don't know what the fans want. They want a soundbite at the beginning of the music. <laughs> Bought sound effects. Everyone gets a sound effects. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stupid. Oh, God. All right. So, uh, oh, yeah. What, <laughs> the thing that happened was this weird, bizarre storyline of Roman Reigns. Like, who's trying to murder Roman Reigns? Oh, oh, it's the worst thing on TV. Yeah. It's the oh, worst it's... thing on WWE. It's terrible. Yeah. Oh, it's Daniel Bryan. No, it's not. It's uh, Eric Rowan. No, it's not. It's a guy in the beard that looks like Eric Rowan. No, it's not. It's Eric Rowan again. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. There's Buddy Murphy. No, it's not. They <laughs> fucked this up so badly that it just needs to end. Like, yeah. have, have the pointless match at Clash of Champions between Roman Reigns and Eric Rowan and then never talk about it again. <laughs> yeah. Ever. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay with like, Pushing new stars, like I'm sure Roman to be Roman to be all right in the main event with uh, nah. Roman Reigns. It won't be great, but I mean, I um, but yeah, I'm not sure what Daniel Bryan now. Is he turned the face by getting stamped to the table? God knows. Um, <laughs> Who knows this, anymore? He's fucked it all up. Daniel Bryan's been a great heel. He's been awesome, yeah. Uh. Uh, I'm disappointed in the whole thing, to be honest. There was no the the payoff was weak. Buddy Murphy yeah. said it was Eric Rowan, and it turns out he was just right all along. Yeah, no doubt. Buddy Murphy's been great, um, by the way. Oh yeah, awesome. Yeah, at least we got great matches from Buddy Murphy. Yeah. But, um, otherwise, nothing else has come out of this. Nothing at all. Yeah, strange. Uh, I don't think Eric Rowan's a star. I never have thought that. I've always thought he was the weakest out of the Wyatt family, and then he was the weakest out of the Bludgeon Brothers, <laughs> and now he's the weak link in this whole situation. Um, yeah. And all of this while Luke Harper sits at home doing nothing. I know it's a shame, isn't it? Like they put Luke Harper in this position to be position to be great, but. Uh... I mean, I don't. Uh, I don't dis- versus Roman Reigns would be awesome. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I don't dislike Roman or anything, but he's not. Yeah, he's not. He's out of the two of them. He's not like Luke Harper good. No, 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 not at all. I, I do <laughs> dislike Luke Harper. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Eric Rowan. I'm not yeah. a fan of like at all. That's fair. <laughs> I just I don't know. Some, I don't know what it is either. It just doesn't look the part. It's never worked. People don't give a shit. Like yeah. when he was coming down to that weird music in a boiler suit. Like no one cared then. <laughs> yeah. Then they tried yeah. to reinvent him by having him come down in the. Uh, you know the stranger-looking masks, like with the like the sheep mask painted as a clown or whatever. They they had, had tried out and that didn't work either. So yeah, no what one really that? gave a shit about the Bludgeon Brothers because it's a rubbish '90s crap gimmick. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, I feel bad for old Luke Harper. He deserves better, much better. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, Eric Rowan will lose to Roman Reigns because Always nobody will. beats Roman Reigns, of course. And uh, that that'll be the end of it. And then this whole storyline was a waste of five weeks or whatever. Yeah. Unless they decide to drag out, e- drag out even more, and someone interferes um, in the match, and like actually he was wasn't Roman at all. He was this guy. It's, oh my god! Please, god, that no. guy. Please, God, no! God Almighty! Yeah. Uh, 
no, 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 just no. Yeah, no. I think the best thing about wrestling these past three weeks, other than obviously the amazing takeover, has been the uh, Ray Wyatt and the Fiend and the Five Odd on House. Yeah, it's and been... did you see that the uh, the venue that's hosting Hell in a Cell basically ruined that the Fiend was going to be in the main event of Hell in a Cell? Oh really? Oh, God damn it, dickheads! Yep, they advertised. <laughs> well, they were advertising tickets for Hell in a Cell, and they went, um, "The Fiend will fight either Roman Reigns or Seth Rollins in Hell in a Cell." It's like, wait, uh, what? God damn it! <laughs> this is what WWE have had to like come out and be like, "Oh, who will?" The fiend face at Hell in a Cell. It's like, why are you ruining this now? Yeah. Like, this would have been perfect. The night after Clash of Champions, the champion standing in the ring, the fiend attacks. You've set your main event up. Fucking awesome. Yeah. But no, this stupid venue have ruined it for all of us. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, even if they had like ruined it, they didn't have to acknowledge it on TV. Like I wouldn't have known that. Like a lot of people out there wouldn't have known that like, he's been announced on some stupid website that you know we're going to appear. Like uh, just don't just don't, don't acknowledge it. Just go on as normal. Yeah, uh, wrestling Twitter basically made it so that people knew. Oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah, annoying, but, but it's so good. It's such a good character, and I can't wait to see more. Um, he wins the championship. I think there's no two ways about it. Oh yeah, like to imagine imagine a fiend as a like universal champion. Like, holy shit. Yeah, but having <laughs> pit, I know we're, we're you know we're very much contradicting ourselves here with how we were about Brock Lesnar, <laughs> who by the way now I would much rather be universal champion than Seth Rollins. But um, <laughs> you know I think if the fiend appears. Not every week. It yeah. makes the Fiend special, and it. I don't know. I just think it'd be awesome if he was the Universal Champ. Yeah, it'd be awesome. What isn't awesome is uh, Michael Cole not showing up during his like entrance or when he appears. Like, oh my God, it's the Fiend! The Fiend is here! The Fiend is kind of tip ring! Oh my God, it's the Fiend! The Fiend's coming! Ah, oh, shut up, Michael! <laughs> we yeah, get it. We know he's here. We see him. We yeah. see him. You're ruining it. We shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like when uh. Like AJ Styles told Michael to shut up in that segment and everyone just cheered. He's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> AJ, AJ Styles just doing what all of us wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, Michael. <laughs> so, oh, yes. so good. AJ this Styles is... is all of us. Yay. Less <laughs> Michael Cole, more Vic Joseph. Because when Vic Joseph guested on commentary on Raw the other week, oh, yeah, it was um, great. he was awesome. Yeah. It's like a breath, was, breath of fresh air. Yeah. And he's young and he's... I he, I think he's really good. I think uh, Vic Joseph is your next voice of WWE. Yeah, it's it great. certainly isn't fucking Corey Graves, and it um, <laughs> yeah most definitely isn't Renee Young. Yeah, we are like Renee Young. She's all right. Oh, I um, love Renee. I think she's great, but you know, I no, she's not. She's not a great <laughs> color commentator. I don't think. Yeah, we don't like Corey Graves, but it, uh, sort of made you dislike him a bit. Was um, he put a tweet out uh, responding to uh, Matthew from Bosmania, like he put yeah. He, like a, like the quote again from uh, Bobby Davis, whoever the hell Bobby Davis is. Um, yeah, it's like what was it? It was like if you win, win if you can, lose if you must, but always cheat. It's like that's a Jesuit sure thing. Everyone knows that. But who the heck's Bobby Davis? And he's like, and Matthew put that basically, and he's like, it's, and like he replied, oh, it's definitely not a botch. Believe it or not, I know more about the business and blah 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 blah. It's like, yeah, all right, all right, dickhead, calm down. It was a joke. Yeah, I don't know why he has to be like that. He just comes across as one of those people that you love to. Fucking punch in real life. Oh, yeah, it's like I'm too good for wrestling Twitter. Uh, like you're on wrestling Twitter, you just tweeted that too. Yeah, uh. <laughs> yeah. You're Corey Graves, a commentator on Raw and SmackDown. You are part of wrestling Twitter, whether you like it or not, dickhead. Yeah, well, not yeah. I, means... I'm not a big fan of him. I don't. I, I used to think he was good on commentary, uh, and now I just think he's irritating. Yeah, I think he's a dickhead. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. On that note, have you got anything else to add? Um, I think that's about it really we'll talk about King of the Ring we'll, uh, doing that night time next week uh, yeah I think we're good cool um, come and watch us do streaming yes as Daydreamer Gaming we are bringing the brand back and we're going to be doing some fun group streams so yes. uh, youtube.com forward slash Daydreamer Gaming yes. and me and Finn are going to be playing through uh, Gears 5 which is going to be very very exciting oh yes and that's going to start this coming Monday if you're listening to this podcast after Monday then you've missed it and it'll be on demand so go do that yeah we're doing it throughout the week anyway we'll be there yeah. but um, thank you so much for 100 episodes and listening to us waffle fair and talk shit about your favourite yeah. wrestlers for 100 episodes woohoo <laughs> Here is the 100 more. Yes. Thank you, everybody. We are the Games and Graps podcast, a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts every single Saturday across podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. And we'll see you next week. Thank you very much, guys. I'm Sonny. I'm Finn. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Bye. Divas.